So like yeah. dose dependent, um, you know, you're saying do it several times a week, you know, there's really no side effects, but can you overdo it? What's like an optimal t- amount of time to, to spend in front of a red light? Do you, can you do it twice a day? Can you do it? Do you need to only do it once a day? Um, wh- what do you think about that? Yeah, so let's let's look at the the empirical basis for what's a good dose. Uh, we talked already about kind of like what we get from the sun. If you stand at the equator on a clear day, you get between twenty and sixty milliwatts per centimeter squared of near infrared. Uh, some some people will say it's up to a hundred, but still, that's a range. That's the range. So it's like that's the dose level. So between twenty and hundred milliwatts per centimeter squared. And then if you look at the at the thousands of thousands of photobiomodulation studies, you see that the sweet spot for uh, this ormetic stress therapy where there's a there's a certain dose amount where we get maximal benefit before we get a decline in benefits, that maximal point is a, pretty much maxes out at 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared. And so if you look in the literature and you see uh, adverse effects due to red light and near-infrared light therapy, that's when we're getting into those really high, we're getting into 500 milliwatts, we're getting to 1000 milliwatts, we're getting really high doses. So we see that also in the literature, if you if you give the, the cell too much red light therapy, too much near infrared light therapy, uh, you do eventually cause damage by uh, basically giving it too much, just like sauna. So that's, so there's a there's a strong theoretical basis here for dose dependency. And so if that's the ancestral context, 20 to 100 milliwatts per centimeter squared, well, what, what should we do at home? What should you do with this? And so what we want to do is kind of hit that same sweet spot. I won't take you through all the math of it because it's kind of complicated and we ought to show it on a whiteboard anyway for your audience if, if we wanted to. That is on our website or we can talk about that later. But but basically uh, with the photon, you can do 10 to 20 minutes on the head or the throat. Uh, excuse me, uh, with, with, with the head of the throat, you only do 10 minutes per session because we don't want to overheat the head. But if you're treating your thyroid, if you're treating your head for brain issues, 10 minutes per session, and you can actually do that five to 10 times a day. Mm-hmm. So even once per hour, but just like sauna, you want to titrate up to that. So if I just got this, I would do, and I wanted to do my head, I do one 10 minute session and that's it in the day and kind of slowly build up. Um, and if we talk about wanting to do multiple parts of our body, let's say, I want to I want to treat my head because I have got I've got you know some neuropsychiatric stuff I'm dealing with, but I've also got this this uh, I sprained my ankle the other day, so I'll do ten minutes on my head and then immediately move it down and, and do ten or twenty or thirty minutes on the ankle. Any other part of the body besides the head, we can do a, a session of twenty or thirty minutes, and we can repeat that session every hour, al- almost every hour of the day, you know, up to eight or ten times a day, and it's very individual based. And you don't want to overdo it. That's my my respectful, uh, you know, advice and warning for the biohackers out there that are really enthusiastic. More is not necessarily better. the 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 maximal benefit here is is to hit that sweet spot and the hormetic stress amount. It's be different for different people, and so you always build up to these things. Again, for this to be really effective and really safe and really awesome, and beneficial, we just want to do a gentle stress on the body. We don't want to kill our body. So with the photon though, because we're it's a it's a it's a spot therapy, we can kind of move it around our body and, and use it a lot. And so that's the photon use. With the sauna, you also have uh, it's an automatic stress therapy. You don't want to overdo it. You can overheat your body, right, and cause heat stroke. But if you heat the body up just a little bit, just three degrees, and get it to sweat five or ten minutes, you have this amazing uh, array of effects. So the goal in all sauna therapy is a three degree temperature increase per session. And with what we do, that takes about 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes, depending on on who you are. And you can eventually do that up to twice a day. And so there are people who are dealing with real disease and serious issues are building up to this very rigorous discipline twice a day use. But most normal people, and I would conclude myself in that, I use it for 20 minutes before work every day. So I use it five days a week. It's just a quick 20 minute session. I pop in there. I don't preheat or anything. I have a five minute shower or something afterwards. So it's, it's a very efficient therapy, what I do. And, uh, and, and the, and the sauna studies and the longevity studies and the new, um, what was it? It was, a uh, was it an all, it was an Alzheimer's study. 
the Lau Cannon, and uh, they did a 2,000 person Alzheimer's and dementia study over 20 years of Finnish males, and the results are tremendous. Um, you, the more you use sauna per week, the proportionally decreased incidence of dementia you have. So they had the people didn't do sauna, people did sauna one day a week, people did it three days a week, people did it seven days a week. And, and the more you did it per week, the subsequently and proportionally decreased incidence of dementia you had. And we see the same thing with a long, if we measure longevity in terms of heart disease, a very similar study from the same guy, Lou Cannon, uh, Lau Cannon in 2015, he followed like two, over 2000 Finnish males for 20 years. And they had massively a decreased incidence of heart attack and coronary heart disease. The people were doing sauna every day. So uh, all that to say that you can do sauna pretty much every day, just like nootropics and just like eating food. You, you, you basically need this every day. And it's not just, it's not just like, oh, that's this thing that our ancestors did. And, and oh, it's kind of this, this fashion, fashionable thing they do now. It's really actually sauna therapy. And the benefits of that are more essential to modern humans than they were to ancestral humans. Because modern humans deal with so many stresses nowadays that we're not biologically programmed to get. Uh, bad, you know, bad nutrition, working too hard, uh, all these different stresses that we have including chemical stress, but also electromagnetic stress. Our ancestral humans pre-1891 had zero man-made electromagnetism on their body, zero microwave signal in anything. So they didn't have to deal with that. But we have to deal with so much more higher levels of stress, all this blue light, poor diet, weird artificial lifestyles indoors. We don't get our light, we don't get anything. And so of course we're suffering for it. And 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 especially now with, with the the whole pandemic and the flu season and stuff, it's just more essential than ever that we keep ourselves really strong and healthy.